just an awesome thing. It doesn't get any better than this. Only when we get to heaven. <laughs> Praise God. I want to ask you to open your Bibles to the Gospel of Luke in chapter 17. And of course, it was mentioned earlier by Brother Walter that it's no coincidence that you're here today. Uh, believe it or not, God brought you here. God made battle for you this morning so you could be here and hear the Word of God. It is up to you now to listen to the Word because the Word is going to be preached. And if you do hear the Word of God, you will not be the same person that you were when you came in through those doors. You're going to walk out of here a different person. But you have to listen to the Word. So that means that, that you're going to be committed to cast out all unbelief and all doubt and whatever may be troubling in your mind and uh, knowing that God has made battle for you so you could be here, it's a great victory. Make a commitment to listen to the Word. That the Word will produce in your life the fruit that is gratifying to God. So it's up to you. Let us open our Bibles to chapter 17 of the Gospel of Luke. And we're going to start at verse 11. <clears throat> Would you stand with me, please, in reverence to the Word? And the Word reads, And it came to pass, as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. And fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? They are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way. Thy faith has made thee whole. Father in heaven, in the name of Jesus, we are so grateful, so grateful that we're here this morning to, to be in your presence, Lord God, and to fellowship among other believers, our brothers and sisters in Christ. And Father, we're so grateful that your word was written uh, under the guidance of the Holy Spirit with such authority, a as your word says, that it's sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to dividing asunder the soul from the spirit. Let your word, Lord God, penetrate our hearts this morning as we listen to your word and your message that we will be the people that you want us to be. Bless us with your presence, Lord God, and receive all the honor and the glory in the name of Jesus. Amen. Please be seated, hermano. Tomen asiento. <clears throat> I'm so excited about this passage this morning because the Lord has spoken to me and in my needs and, and I've received the, the word of the Lord and and I'm so grateful. I'd like to share it with you this morning because it's so important. Before I do that, let me, let me mention something about what Brother Abe uh, was teaching here this morning. Uh, on the strategy for Stonegate Baptist Church, uh, it starts out by uh, ex striving for excellence. And, uh, you know, when I first, when I first took this position, uh, the church was called Rancho Alegre Baptist Church, Iglesia Bautista de Rancho Alegre. And... Uh, I was a new, a new person, a new, new pastor. I never went to seminary. I never did anything like that. But, but God called me. And believe me, there's no doubt in my mind that God called me. <laughs> and uh, I answered the call. But my pastor uh, didn't want to let me go from that church. And I had a hard time doing that. But when he finally gave in and said, well, go. If God is calling you, go ahead and go. But remember one thing. Preach Jesus. Preach Jesus. And the time came when I started pastoring that church that I had to remember that phrase because something happened in the church that as a new pastor, uh, I didn't know how to handle it. And I remember that that morning as I was getting dressed to go to church, 
And I was combing my hair. I had real long hair at that time. <laughs> Just kidding. And uh, as I was combing my hair, I said, if only my pastor would be here with me, he could help me with this situation. And all of a sudden, in my spirit, I heard a voice. First of all, yes, God speaks to me. God speaks to everybody, by the way. And he says, yes, but then you would listen to him and you wouldn't listen to me. Not that my pastor was bad, but God says, in order for that church to be excellent, I'm going to have to be the leadership of that church. And I want to assure you that it was on those bases, on that foundation, that I went back and I preached Jesus and the Lord started blessing. And that's why we're here today. I just wanted to enhance what you were talking about this morning. Getting back to the passage, we have this time where Jesus uh, is going to perform a great miracle. And uh, the, what, uh, what took place during, in this miracle has a lot of bearing as to how we sometimes act concerning what God is telling us to do. Uh, first of all, let me, let me address the fact that, that Jesus was passing by. Uh, it reads like that. And it came to pass as he went towards or to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Jesus was on a conquest. Jesus was going somewhere and he was passing through this place. Jesus was focused on Jerusalem. After all, that's why he came. He came to go to Jerusalem to be handed over to the heathen to be crucified. So he was focusing on that. But let me tell you something. When, when Jesus was on his way, he saw something, something extraordinary. And uh, uh, Jesus is going to stop. We know that for a fact. But not only this, it, it also happened in another occasion, when, in, especially in, in Luke chapter 19, when, when uh, the author relates to us the story about Zacchaeus, a little short man that um, knew that Jesus was going to pass by by the streets of Jericho, and uh, he decided to go see Jesus. But because he was very short, and there was a lot of people, and the press was so great that he couldn't, he couldn't see Jesus. But Jesus was watching him. Zacchaeus didn't give up. He went and found a sycamore tree, and he climbed that tree, and he was able to see Jesus. But the story that I want to bring to you this morning is the fact that when Jesus sees something extraordinary in people, he will stop on your behalf and mine. What he saw was a chaos trapped up on a tree, and he was trying to see Jesus. And of course, we know the story that Zacchaeus got saved. His life changed, uh, turned around, and, and uh, Zacchaeus was blessed. We have that story in the Bible, so we can relate it to people today, that, that, that your problem, my problem, your issues, my issues, if you call on the name of Jesus, he will stop. Because see, Jesus was going to Jerusalem. Now, we may say, well, Jesus, uh, how, do you, how does Jesus stop with everybody? Jesus is on the way to terminating time. There's going to come a time when people are not going to see Jesus. There's going to come a time when, when everything's going to be over and the church is going to be out of here. But right now is a time when Jesus is passing by. Every time we preach the word, every time we fellowship together, the word of God says, well, there's two or three gathered in my name, I am in the midst. So Jesus, even though it's passing by, through the time of this world, to the culmination of time, when the, he's going to lift up the church and everything's going to be over, but yet there's something extraordinary here this morning that stops the Lord Jesus. And that's the fact that we're preaching from the Word of God. So Jesus is here. Now the extraordinary thing is on every one of us here this morning. We might have some kind of a problem. We might have some issues in our lives that um, we, we, want, we need help, don't we? We need somebody to, to, to alleviate what, what, we might be, what we might be going through. Tongue twisting, eh? <laughs> we, we might have a problem and we need help from somebody, and that help comes from God. The best help that you and I can receive this morning is from God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. So Jesus is, is holding back right now in the time to be able to see you and I. And by the way, Every church in the world where Jesus is preached, the same thing is going on. That's the great phenomenon because, see, the Holy Spirit is doing that because the end of time is going to come. Jesus was passing by, going towards Jerusalem. And when he went to the midst of Samaria and Galilee, and as he entered into a certain village, 
There met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. Now, the first thing that we need to learn from this particular instance here is that um, Jesus, Jesus saw these people. And there were ten of them, meaning that they all had the same thing in common. They were all lepers, and they were isolated from the whole uh, community and society. They were not allowed to come into the village. They were not allowed to, to fellowship with other people, not even their own family, their children, their wives, or whatever the case may be. They were isolated, totally isolated. But yet, the story tells us that there were ten of them. Ten of them in, in, in one space, but the, the most important thing is that the Word of God says that they were standing up. They stood up. They stood up and, and, and they cried unto the Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, it was an extraordinary thing. As Jesus was passing through that village there, he saw ten men that were standing up far off. The reason they were standing up far off because they couldn't get close to anyone because of their disease. Uh, in the book of Levit Leviticus chapter 13 and 14, it tells us that, that these lepers were, were to be isolated, totally isolated from society and from the community. And if anybody was to come near them, they were to shout out, unclean, unclean. And that was the, the, the weight that these people were under. But yet they stood and they cried out to Jesus. And Jesus saw these ten men. They were all together in one accord, as we say. They had the same thing in common. And notice that they didn't ask that uh, Jesus heal me or Jesus uh, justice for me because look at the, the, the position that I'm in. And No, they cried out and said, Master, Master, have mercy on us. They were asking for mercy. What a great phenomenon there. And it, they could have asked for a lot of other things, but, but they were asking for mercy. But the most important thing is that they were standing up. You know, there's a lot of people today that, that need help. They, they got issues in their lives. They got things that they don't know how to handle. But yet the word is being preached. Jesus is passing by Stonegate Baptist Church. And they, res, and they remain sitting. Now these lepers could have been sitting down. But they stood up. In other words, they were, they were expecting something. And when they stood up, that caught the attention of Jesus Christ. Let me, let me challenge you here this morning. I don't know what, what might be going on in your life or whatever you're going through. But all you have to do. It'd be extraordinary. Stand up in the name of Jesus because Jesus is here. Jesus wants to bless you. Jesus, you're, you're, you're calling Jesus, and let me tell you, he's, he's the God that answers all our prayers. He, he's God that, that cares and loves us so much. And all we have to do is show that extraordinary thing because, see, it takes faith to stand up. It takes a lot of faith to stand up and, and believe that Jesus can do it. This leper... Men have probably heard about Jesus, how he healed leprosy, how he raised up the dead, uh, how, he, how he made a lot of miracles, and, and now he's passing by. Listen, let, hermanos, if we don't stand up, if we don't stand up when, when we're in the presence of Jesus, it, we may just miss, miss the opportunity. You see, he's passing by. He's passing by. But if you're here this morning and you feel the presence of God and, and you have an issue in your life that needs to be addressed by God, then you need to be touched by the Holy Spirit. Stand up in the name of Jesus because he's here. And you'll be extraordinary and God will, will handle whatever might be going on in your life. Uh, in other words, get up. We have another occasion in the same, uh, in the same gospel a uh, little before that when when the prodigal son parable was related by Jesus to his disciples, and he talked about this young man that, to make the long story short, went to a distant land, uh, turned all his uh, inheritance to money, went over there, spent everything, and lived a, an ugly life, and he ran out of money. And uh, he lost everything that he had. When he found himself in the pig's pen, and not even able to eat the, the food that the pigs were eating, he realized something. In other words, he woke up. He woke up and the first thing that he says, I'm going to arise and I'm going to go to my father. I'm going to get up. See, everything, everything falls on the action in your heart and mind. I'm not going to remain here. I'm going to get up. Well, we might be going through a lot of things. You know, we might, have, we might have people in our family that are not safe and not born again. We might go through financial problems. We might go through health problems. I don't know what the case may be, but whatever it is, we need to get up and call on the name of Jesus. 
He's here. I mean, why do you want to lose a moment? Why do you want to lose a blessing? Why would you like, I mean, why would people decide to lose a miracle that God has for every one of us? All we have to do is stand up and cry out to Jesus, have mercy on me. Have mercy on us. And I guarantee you that will bring the attention of Jesus to your behalf. There's a lot of things going on in society today that, that the devil is doing. And everything that he does is designed to kill you, to steal from you, and, and to steal your joy, and to steal everything that, that God wants to do in your life. But Jesus says, I've come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Jesus was passing by, and they cried out, the ten men, all together, in one voice, and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourself to the priest, unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were clean. See, uh, a lot of people may believe what I'm saying here this morning, and, and they have a little feeling that they want to get up, and they might get up. They might get up and say, I need help. I mean, we've we got something in common. We, we need God in our lives. We need Jesus to, to bless us. We need the healing hand of God on us. We need the financial liberty in our in our lives. We, we need our children serving God. We need our spouses serving God. We need, we need all of this. And they stand up because they know that God can do it. I mean, if you don't think God can do it, look around here. Everybody in this church, we had similar circumstances and you know, the Lord has blessed us. The Lord has, has restored marriages in this church. The Lord has brought children back to Him. The Lord has brought people that, that were lost and strayed away from God. He has brought them back. Every, all this church is filled with people like that. They will stand and call out on the name of the Lord. But when they have to walk out by faith, and this is all humanity, we have a tendency of thinking that if we don't see it, we won't believe it. And, and faith comes very scarce in a lot of people, especially when you have that disease of leprosy. Now, leprosy can be, can be uh, just like anything in your life, sin, whatever it is. That will lead away your life. And when we see those things, it's very kind of, it's kind of hard to believe that just by getting up and going out by faith that God is going to do something. But folks, that's the way God works. When you stand and call the attention of God and cry out to Him, He will answer you, but He will give you instructions that may go against your human reasoning. Uh, didn't He, uh, didn't he uh, make mud and put it on, on the blind man's eyes, that's kind of against human reasoning in it. But yet God did it like that. God says, get up and go and show yourself to the priest. Go tell him. And the word says that as soon as they got up, the healing process started in their life. So I can imagine those 10 lepers, as they were walking, I bet they were amazed. Because when they obeyed, after they stood up in faith and called out, and then they came out, and by faith they walked towards the priest, because that was required in the Jewish tradition, that if you had leprosy, and you had to be isolated, and you couldn't got, come back into the community or society until you were healed. So the only one that could declare you that you were healed was a priest. And here they go, walking towards the priest, and seeing that leper going out of their body, and uh, everything turn, turns into normal again. I can just imagine those ten lepers really rejoicing, really rejoicing because they're, they now are thinking, I can go back and live a normal life. I can go back to my wife. I can go back to my children. I can go back to my business. I can go back. I can go back. I can go back. I can go back. I can just imagine that when they got to the priest, they're already full of joy. And sure enough, the priest declared them and says, you were clean. And that even brought greater joy because that was a confirmation that they could come back to society. That was a confirmation that they could be normal again. But the fact of the matter is this, that the most important passage here that has to do with us acting the right way with the right attitude happens to be with the one man that came back to Jesus. 
I can just imagine those, uh, the nine of them that didn't come back to Jesus, probably going back to their families, going back to their businesses, going back to normal life and, and, and rejoicing and, and, and just enjoying whatever they had. But one man stood in the middle of the road and didn't want to lose a moment. Let me repeat this. Then he, he, he didn't want to lose a moment. He wanted to come back, and he did come back. Just like he got up to call on Jesus and obeyed him when he went out by faith. And now he's standing in the middle of the road, and he sees Jesus passing by. You see, if we don't thank Jesus, we may lose a moment. Yes, when we lose a moment, everything goes out the window. Jesus is passing by, and he expects for us to come back and thank him. Come back to him. Come back to him who was able to touch your life, who was able to give you instructions, even though against human reason, and by the grace of God you obeyed, and you're here this morning. So, see, the gratitude. Oh, lots of times we, desperation will bring us to Christ, but now you, you stand up and, 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 and you call upon the Lord and you go on by faith. Desperation will get us, will get us that, that position. But it's only the gratitude that will keep you there. It's only the gratitude. There's a lot of you here this morning just like me. That we got touched by God. I got touched by the Lord 39 years ago. 39 years ago. Some of you are just a brand new Christian. Some of you maybe 10, 15, 20, 30 years. I don't know. But my God, we need to come back to Jesus. He's the one that saved you. He's the one that saved me. He's the one that, rec that receives the gratitude. And the moment is here to thank him. The moment is here to be grateful for what God has done in our lives. There's millions of people all over the world that are playing church. There's millions of people all over the world that have religion. There's millions of people all over the world that don't even know God. There's millions of people in the world that are going to hell. And here we are, here we are, Jesus passing by and we've got his attention. And we're here this morning. And I believe that a lot of you have gratitude in your heart. And maybe there's some of you that are not grateful. Maybe the salvation to you is just another thing. Going to church is just a, a thing that you have to do. You're here because you're grateful. If you're not, you need to be. You need to be very grateful. I like to think about that man in, uh, in, in uh, Acts chapter 4 where, where P Peter and, and, and uh and John came up to the temple to pray at, at the third hour of the day. And, and uh, they found a, a man there paralytic by birth. And he couldn't move. And he was asking for alms. And when they showed up, the apostles did. Uh, that man asked for alms, expecting to receive something from them. And Peter says, I don't have silver or gold, but what I have I'll give to you. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, get up and walk. And as soon as they said that, faith came into his bones. And, and, he, and, and Peter extended up his hand to help him. See, that was the face of Peter. Uh, you know, sometimes we see people so sick and so uh, distraught. And, and we pray for them, but we don't have faith that they're going to heal. We don't have faith that they're going to be restored. We don't have faith that God is going to answer. Listen, God, listen to my notes. God is going to answer. He's going to answer because his name is at stake. He's going to answer because his promises are not to go back. His promises to go forward. Jesus is passing by and bringing all these promises to us. And if we call on them, they're going to be performed. God is not a man that can lie. If he said, you can do all things through Christ, believe me, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. If he says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you, my God, he's never going to leave you or forsake you. And if God says, a man comes to me, has eternal life, you have eternal life. His promises are real. But we've got to have that faith. We've got to have that faith. Listen, folks, everything rests on the church. The church, because the church has the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit wants to do the will of God. And the will of God is that every soul will come to salvation and forgiveness through the Lord Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit will enable us to pray with faith. The world needs to see the faith in the church. If we pray for somebody that is going through financial problems, if we pray for somebody that is sick, if we pray for a marriage that has been destroyed by Satan, if we pray for a child that is hurting uh, with bad experience in his life, if we pray for a drug addict that wants to quit drugs, if we pray, if we pray, 
If we come to the throne of grace, we must believe that Jesus is there. And if Jesus is there, who can be against us? And if we pray, and if we pray, have you known this morning that God will answer? God is not going to turn a dead ear on you and me. He's going, his ears are going to be wide open to all them that pray with faith. It is by faith. Now these people got all they, all, they all had leprosy. They all got healed. They all stood up. They all went out by faith. But only one came back. Only one. There's a difference between one and the nine. And Jesus asked the question, where is the nine? Where, where is the nine? Could this resound in some of people's mind that, that they receive the blessing? I've seen a lot of people get blessed by God. I mean, I've seen a lot of people. See, my God blesses people. <laughs> my God heals people. My God restores marriages, relationships. My God, I mean, brings, brings whatever a person needs according to his riches and glory. He always do that. I believe that with all my heart. But where are the people that God has blessed? Where are they? I mean, there's, there's no way that a person that is being blessed by God, especially salvation, that you cannot be grateful to God. I mean, you don't deserve it. I don't deserve it. God gave it to us freely. And we have been forgiven. And not, not to say the least, God is with us every single day, never to, to leave us or forsake us. And he's always going to be with us. So there's no, there's no reason why a safe person would not come back and thank him and praise him. Sometimes it's so hard to get people out of bed on Sunday morning. It is. We, we should remind them, hey, are you saved? <laughs> are you born again? Has God forgiven all your sins? Hasn't God blessed you financially? Hasn't God given you a job? Hasn't God restored your marriage? Hasn't God restored your children? Hasn't God given you the opportunity to do good? Hasn't God done all these things? My God, get out of bed and come and thank him. Don't, don't stay in bed. I mean, uh, oh, I want to watch TV. <laughs> That's good. There's some good messages on TV. But there's nothing like coming to church. There's nothing like being among other believers. There's nothing like it, let me tell you. This is something very unique. This is excellent because Jesus is here. Uh, somebody asked, who's the best preacher in, in the world? Well, I am. Wow, man, you say that? Yes, why? Because Jesus speaks through me. <laughs> and if Jesus speaks, I mean, that I, had a, I have to be great because God is great. You understand? And every preacher that preaches the gospel, they're great. They are great because they're speaking from the word of God. And, and excellence lies in what Jesus says. So let me, let me put this on you this morning. <clears throat> Do you sometimes play the part of the nine? Do you sometimes play that part because, uh, because you're not, it passes by you? Maybe you lost the opportunity. <coughs> Maybe you lost the moment. <coughs> as soon as God blesses you, <coughs> <clears throat> as soon as God blesses you and you're losing the moment when that joy is there and the reality that God has done a miracle for you and you may say, well, I'm going to wait till Sunday. <laughs> I'm going to wait till next week. I'm going to wait. My God, give him praise right away. You may lose the moment. You may lose. You know what happens when you give pri praises to God right away? You, you, you transfer you transfer everything from you to him. And that's what God wants. He says, if any man wants to come and follow me, let him deny himself, pick up his cross and follow me. We'll do precisely that when we thank him right away. You know, I'm going to share something with you. It may not make a lot of noise with a lot of you, but I play golf. Everybody knows that. <laughs> but every time I make a shot, every time I'm, I do something that, that the ball goes into the hole and and uh, instead of jumping up, I had to remind myself, it wasn't me that did that. It was God. God enabled my, my reflex and my bones and my thoughts and my mind 
to be synchronized to put that ball in the hole. Is that, does that sound too ugly for you? But that's a reality. I need to thank God every time. When people come and say, oh, good shot. No, it wasn't me, it was God. I mean, we had to give him honor and glory right there and then. We need to come back to the one that performed the miracle in your life. If we don't, we're going to lose the moment. If we don't get up, we're going to lose the opportunity. If we don't get up and go, we might just lose a miracle. There's a lot of people that need that, that are sitting down and they might even stand up. But if you don't go up by faith, you're going to lose a miracle. Because it, only by faith will God move his hands upon you. The word says in the Hebrews, it says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. So when you have faith, God will move on your behalf. You say, oh, my God, if you go through something right now, in a few minutes, we're going to make an altar call. We're going to make an altar call. And, and uh, some people may not like altar calls because, uh, man, I have to get up and go to the altar and stand there. And, and I'm going to stand there for about five, ten minutes. And, and everybody's going to see me walk to the altar. And uh, what are they going to think about me? My God, get up and walk to the altar. Get up and, 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 and say, Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm getting up and I'm going out of my pew. By faith, I'm going out, knowing that as I'm starting to step out, my faith starts being exhibited. And when my faith starts being exhibited, it's going to please you, and you're going to answer my petition. How many of you have problems? Now, don't raise up your hand. Because everybody will be up. We all have problems, don't we? We all have issues. We all have needs in our life. We all have needs that the humanity cannot bring and bless us with. Only God can perform those miracles. And let me tell you, brothers, God is ready from heaven to perform a miracle on your behalf and mine. Whatever it is. You mean to tell me, brother, that if I pray for healing, God will heal me? Let me tell you this. God can heal you. God can heal you. Whether he doesn't that's your problem and his. But you've got to believe that God can heal you. And if you walk by faith, that's going to please God. We're not, we're, not, we're not the people that does everything. God does everything. But you've got to believe in the Lord. You have financial problems? Yeah, now, I mentioned that because I know that that's a common thing. Especially now that the oil field is going down. You have financial problems. You might say, well, I can stand up for that. But I'm not going to go out because people are going to think that I'm losing everything. My God, if you don't get up, you're going to miss a miracle. If you don't get up and, and, and get out from where you're at, get out from your own belief, get out from your, your fear, your doubt, get out, get out from there and walk towards Jesus Christ. You know why? Because he's passing by. This moment may not, may not come to you again because people may even say, well, I'm not going to do this this Sunday. I'm going to wait till next Sunday. I mean, fool, do you know that you're going to be alive next Sunday? Do you, really, do you really think that way? You don't know if you're going to live tomorrow or next minute or so. So the time to get up and walk out and come out is right now. And then after you come, even though you have not received what you're looking for because you're here in church, but you start thanking God by faith. And you come to him knowing that he's in control of your life. He's in control of your finances, your health, your children, your wife, your, your husband. He's in control of everything, your business, whatever you have, he's in control of it. I guarantee you he's in control. A lot of people may say, no, I work hard all my life for this. Yes, you did. But God permitted you for, for you to work hard. God gave you the strength for you to work hard. God gave you the knowledge, put you at the right place at the right time. And he's the one that you need to come back to. Let us stand, please. Where is the nine? Where are the nine? <coughs> you know, the all ten of them. <coughs> please close your eyes and bow your head. And let me remind you of something. <coughs> In this parable, we have ten of them with the same situation. And the thing that they needed was healing. And when they did everything that Jesus told them to do, they stood up, first of all. Jesus answered. They came out. 
by faith and went to the high priest or the priest. And they were healed. <coughs> they were healed because it was declared by the priest that a miracle had happened. And he said these words, you are clean. You have the blessing. You have the blessing. Listen to me, everybody. The not, all ten of them heard this. But only one of them heard it from the Savior far and beyond of being clean. He said, your faith has made you whole. Half of a miracle is not a complete miracle because those ten didn't hear the declaration of Jesus. One of the reasons we need to be grateful to God is because that tells you that you receive something from God. See, if you don't receive anything from God, gratitude is not in your heart towards God. But when you have gratitude, that means that God did something for you. That means that you're born again. That means that you're saved, you're forgiven. That means that you have eternal life. That means that God is your God and, and you're not in darkness anymore. You live in the light and you live in the presence of God. If you're not grateful this morning, I want you to be concerned. Because the most important thing in your life and mine is that we've been declared by Jesus, you have been made whole. You have salvation. Your miracle is complete. The book of Colossians says we are complete in Christ. If you are complete in Christ, you're hearing the voice of God telling you there's nothing that can come against you. There's nobody that can snatch you out of my hand. And all things will turn out for the good to them that love the Lord. Can you develop that gratitude as we're speaking? Can you develop that gratitude for being saved, being born again, having eternal life inside of you? Having God on your side every single day? Can you be grateful for that? If you're not grateful for that, I want you to be concerned. I want you to be concerned. It's just like when the verse says, John 3, 36, He that has the Son has life. He that does not have the Son does not have life. A declaration from Jesus to His disciples. My God, if you're hearing this morning that verse, he that has the Son has life, and he that does not have the Son does not have life, but the curse of God remaineth upon him. You should be concerned and ask yourself, do I really have Jesus in my heart? Do I really have the Son of God to have life? And if you do, you need to be very grateful because it's a gift from God. And if you don't have Jesus in your heart, then you need to be concerned for your fate in eternity. Because the Word of God says the person that is not saved is going to have to go to hell. A person that is not forgiven is going to have to pay for their sins in eternity in hell. But if you have the Son of God, you have life. My appeal to you this morning is, if you're not saved, be concerned. And Jesus is here. If you stand and you call upon the name of the Lord, you will be saved this morning. If you're saved, understand that Jesus is the one that saved you. If Jesus is the one that saved you, you need to come back to him with gratitude. As I'm speaking this morning, I want to say a very simple prayer for those that are not saved, the, the ones that are not born again. <clears throat> God knows who you are. But God is touching your heart as we're speaking here. And I just want to say a very simple prayer. All it takes to be right with God, you're already standing. You're already waiting for something. Now all you have to do is get out by faith and repeat this message or this verses with me or this prayer just repeat it with me by faith and mean it in your heart Father in heaven repeat it with me Father in heaven in the name of Jesus 
I stand before you a sinner. I am a sinner. I deserve condemnation. But I repent of my sins, Lord. And I receive the forgiveness of my sins through the shed blood of your son, Jesus. And I open the door to my heart. And I invite your son, Jesus, come into my heart, Lord. Come into my life and be my Savior. Be my Lord. Be my God. And teach me, Lord, to be a good Christian, a doer of your word. And I renounce Satan out of my life and my relationship. And I pray that the Holy Spirit fills me to do your will. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for forgiving all my sins and for giving me eternal life in the name of Jesus. We have stepped out by faith now. We have stepped out by faith. Your, your desperation brought you to this point. But now gratitude is going to keep you. As I'm speaking, those of you that are grateful in your heart for being saved, I want you to make your way up to the altar. This Whether you've been saved 40, 50 years ago, two days, two minutes, whatever the case may be, come to the altar and let's express our gratitude towards God. Let's be very, very grateful. When you're walking out, my God, thank God that you're saved and born again. Thank God that you can walk. Thank God that you can make decisions. Thank God that you're here. Thank God that he's in control. Would you please just make your way up to the altar? In the name of Jesus, come.
bless you and we honor you. Thank you, Lord God, because when we were in need, when we were in darkness, when we were dead in our sins, you died for us. And not only that, but you made us understand that if we will repent of our sins and trust on Jesus for salvation, and that is a gift from you, Lord, because we were able to believe because of your word. And in that day, Lord, you forgave our sins. You gave us eternal life. And we are eternally grateful to you, Lord. Enable us, Father God, that through that gratefulness that we have towards you, that we will be able to win other people to come and learn to be grateful to you. Father, I pray for everyone here on the altar this morning, the ones that just gave their lives to you, that you will bless them, keep them in your hand, and bless them and prosper them. Supply all their needs, Father, according to your riches and glory. And I pray for all everyone that is here, including myself, that you will use us, Father God, as you have used this text for years and years and years, and you used it again this morning to illustrate how, how careful we need to be to be very grateful to you, Lord. Father, we are so grateful. Use us. Use us, my Lord, to expand this gratitude to everybody. Father, we thank you for everyone here on the altar. And again, I ask for special blessings that you will keep all the families together under the power of your Holy Spirit. And Father God, that you will again bless all their children and our children. And we give you the honor and the glory. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Standing for a few more minutes.